Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you five simple CNC projects that you can make to get you some quick wins if you're new to CNCing. So stay tuned and check it out. Alright, so the first project is going to be a wooden trivet. Uh, and throughout this video I'll show you a few different ways to hold the material down to the work surface. And this way is simply just some masking tape and some super glue. So essentially just put masking tape on both surfaces, super glue in between. Here I'm using a little bit of activator and then just stick the two together. And this is going to hold really well actually. And another thing you'll probably notice is that I tend to work from the zero zero point and I just have always done it that way. I don't know if there's any benefit to it, but I think I saw it in a two moose design video and just have done it that way ever since. Then I'm just using a 90 degree V bit for this first tool path. And again, I'm just using the paper method, nothing too specific here. I can load up the file and zero everything out and then just hit play. And over on this side, you can see that I've listed all the settings that I used as far as the router setting, the feed rate, the plunge rate, the depth of cut, all that. Um, just one thing to note with any of these projects, I'm using a Onefinity CNC machine. It's the Woodworker X50. Um, so if you have a different machine uh, or a different router or whatever, you might want to use different settings. Um, this is just what I used and you might have to tweak uh, your settings to match your machine. So here it's simply just making that grid on there and then one little outline. Then after that I can swap out the bits and this next bit that I'm going to use is an eighth inch down cut bit. Now if I did this project again I probably would just go with a quarter inch down cut bit and the reason for that is this eighth inch down cut bit only had about uh, three quarters of an inch of cut surface I guess you would say uh, before it tapered back up to that quarter inch uh, collet size. So again, I would probably just use a quarter inch down cut bit here. It, there's really no uh, benefit to using an eighth inch over a quarter inch in this specific case. And you can see like on that top edge, it kind of burned a few areas and it kind of actually left this like little bit of a round over on that top edge which actually kind of turned out to be a cool little detail but definitely wasn't the intention from the start but i think in the end it looked kind of cool then i could just sand this down with the orbital sander and then i used a wire brush on all the little grooves just to get all those fuzzies out and then i applied a coat of walrus oil and I think this turned out really cool. Uh, there's definitely endless possibilities that you could do as far as patterns and shapes for these wooden trivets. All right, so project number two is gonna be a large serving tray. And for this one, I'm gonna be gluing up two pieces of walnut together. And the reason that I'm showing this is because if you're like me and you just have a lunchbox planer, um, that has a certain width to it, obviously. Uh, and mine happens to be 12 inches. This uh, work piece happened to be, I think it was about 16 inches wide. So obviously I couldn't run that through my planer. But this is also a really cool use case for having a CNC, is you can flatten slabs like this. So I just put a one inch flattening bit in the router and then a cool feature about the Onefinity CNC machine is that you can essentially drive it around with a video game controller. So instead of having to go to the computer and set up a whole new tool path and then export that, plug it in the machine and then run that tool path, all you gotta do is turn the router on, turn the machine on and then you can just drive it around. It really makes quick work of flattening slabs like this. And you can see that I'm just holding this piece in place with some scrap MDF brad nailed to the work surface. And again, this method works surprisingly well. It's really quick and honestly, I probably use it about 70% of the time. So with the piece flattened, I could put a three quarter inch bowl bit in the router and run the first tool path. And this first pass is basically just gonna be hogging out a whole bunch of material. Um, it's going really slow as far as a feed rate and the plunge rate is about half that. So feed rate is 40 inches per minute, plunge rate is 20. And then I kept the step over at 40%. 
And you can see after this first toolpath, it left a bunch of lines, and that's kind of to be expected when you have a 40% step over and you're hogging out a whole bunch of material like this. But that's okay, that's where this second toolpath comes into play. So with the second toolpath, I could bump up the feed rate, I could bump up the plunge rate, even though that doesn't really matter in this case. Um, and I could do a really light pass, essentially running the same uh, shape, but just going just a tiny bit deeper. So I think it was a 0.005 inch uh, depth on that, but then I could decrease the step over percent. So I went from a 40% step over to a 10% step over. So essentially what you need to remember with the step over percentage is the smaller the percentage, the more it's gonna step over the previous path. So the smoother result you're gonna get. And you can kind of see this with that second pass. So once that was finished, then I just put a quarter inch down cut bit in the router and then I could re-zero it on the side and then I'm just going to re-zero the z-axis and then I can cut out the overall shape of this. And I do end up using tabs on this um, and I just cut those free with a multi-tool and then here's our piece. Now all we got to do is sand it smooth and apply some finish. One little trick that I like to do if I have like a round over on the inside like we do here is I kind of offset the sandpaper on the sander and then it kind of rides up on those inside uh, rounded over corners essentially. It just kind of makes a little bit quicker work of that instead of doing that by hand. And for the finish I'm just using some walnut cutting board oil. I think this project turned out really cool and I mean you can use it as just display or decoration or you can use it as basically a charcuterie board like I guess those are still popular maybe. <laughs> I think it's a really simple design but it's kind of a really cool piece in my opinion. And that's kind of what we're shooting for here. All right third project is just going to be some modular trays so uh, maybe you recognize this piece but essentially I took the scraps from the previous project that large tray glued those together and now it can get some small little I guess trays out of it so a uh, pretty similar project to the previous project but this just goes to show you that uh, you really you can use your scraps and make some really cool little trays like this uh, you can make them modular and so they all kind of fit together and whatnot but essentially I'm using the same two bits so I'm using that three quarter inch bowl bit to hog out the material on the inside and then I'm using a quarter inch down cut bit to cut the overall shapes out. And for this method of hold down maybe you can see in the corners but essentially I just brand nailed this piece to the work surface and then just cut it out. And there we go we got three trays. I think this took less than 20 minutes uh, for both of the tool paths and we got three trays that kind of work together like that. Uh, the possibilities with little trays like this is pretty limitless so especially once you start working with sizes that fit together like these do. So I made these on a 3x3 grid so the first one's 3x3 and then a 3x6 then a 3x9. You could do a 6x9, a 9x9, a 6x6. You know endless possibilities. Then I picked up this little uh, drill attachment. It's got kind of like this little foam base to the sandpaper so it can kind of ride up on those edges on the inside. Put that in the drill press and sanded these smooth. Then for finish, I just used some wipe on poly in a satin clear, I believe. So again, this is essentially the same project as the one before, just a smaller scale. Um, but you can design any shape and size of these to kind of nest together like this. and. Uh, they really come together well and it's an excellent way to use up some of your scraps. Alright, this next project is going to be a customized tray, but honestly it could be just customizing anything in general. And it's also a lesson in order of operations. So I did this one completely backwards, not really sure what I was thinking, but essentially what you want to keep in mind is that you want to do all your tool paths and carvings prior to cutting out the overall shape from the overall material. So that last cut is called a contour cut where you cut all the way through the material and you're left with the overall piece. 
I did that first and backwards and I should have done the carvings, uh, the words carved into the piece and then cut the circle out. It just took a little bit more time to line up where I wanted the words on this round piece, um, but in the end it all worked out fine. I just could have saved a little bit of time. So then after I had that cut out with a quarter inch down cut bit, I could put a 90 degree V carve bit in there and then cut out the words. And you can see here, I just used some clamps to hold the piece down because essentially that was my only option. After all the CNC work was done, then I could mark out where I wanted the handles. And essentially that could have been part of the CNC file as well. Uh, I could have taken that V-carve bit and just essentially dipped down into the material just enough to mark out where those holes would be and then come back later with the drill and drill bit and drill those holes out. Again, it could have just saved me a little bit of time if I would have marked those out on the CNC file initially, but in the end it all worked out. So after I had the holes drilled out for the handles, I could apply a stain to it and then a clear coat and let that all dry. Once everything was dry, I could attach the handles and then flip it over and put a few felt feet on the bottom just so it won't scratch any surfaces. And this thing's a wrap. I kind of like the subtlety of the lettering on this one, that it's not a different color than the rest of the wood and the stain. And this could be used as a serving tray or just decor like you see here. This is one of those projects that you could knock out really quickly and have a really quick win with your CNC machine. Alright, and the last project is going to be a desk organizer. So we're going to use that same 3 quarter inch bowl bit to cut out what I'm going to call is the mouth and the nose of this piece. And then I'm going to switch over to the quarter inch down cut bit and cut out the two eyes and then cut out the overall face. <laughs> and you'll see in just a moment here. And as I'm assembling this video together, I'm realizing that the theme of this video is trays. So basically every project in this, minus the first one, that trivet, was essentially a tray. But I guess it just goes to show you that even if you niche down in a specific category like trays, that there are so many different possibilities. Then once the piece was all cut out, I could use the multi-tool to cut off the tabs and start sanding. Alright, so I just started to sand this thing down and then I realized that I forgot to design something into this file before I exported it to the CNC machine uh, so that it would cut it out. And what that is, is this. So on this side, it's going to be a wireless charger. So we got a drink coaster over here and we got a wireless charger over here for like a phone or for some earbuds, like some AirPods. And what I forgot to design in the file is this little pocket right here for the cord to pass through. All right, so I've got it zeroed out on this bottom surface right here. And I'm just going to essentially drive it through on that center mark. So yeah, this was a little bit of a challenge to do one-handed, but obviously if you weren't holding a camera in the other hand, this would be a lot easier, essentially just driving this through and making that little path. And it turned out perfect. And there we go. We got a little groove cut in after the fact. And we can just take these clamps off. We can get back to sanding. Then I just used some wipe-on poly as a finish let that dry, and then this thing was ready to use. So essentially the left eye of this is gonna be a wireless charger, the nose is for like little USB drives, the right eye is gonna be a drink holder, and then the bottom, like the mouth of this, is for pens and pencils and other things like that. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this was helpful to you, especially if you're fairly new to CNC machining and you were just looking for some inspiration or some projects that were gonna be those quick win projects at the start to kind of build your confidence. And if that's the case, I'll leave a link down below where you can download these same files and make these projects for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button down below. That just tells YouTube that this was a decent video and maybe it should pass it on to some other people to watch. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, and if I've earned it, please consider hitting that subscribe button. That just really helps me grow my channel, and that way you're notified every time I release a new video. And until next time, thanks for watching.